Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I almost said good morning. You may be listening to this any time of day, so good day to all of you out there. I'm your host, Kevin, and today I have the honor of hosting Todd Sullivan. Todd is a, let me get this list ready, Christian husband, dad, athlete, coach, and 30-year veteran of the United States Navy, to name some of his accomplishments. He's held positions in corporate HR, been CEO of a startup, and now co-owns a CrossFit gym and his own coaching business. He's an avid reader and last but certainly not least, loves spending time with his wife, Amy, which family first. We love that here. We'd love to hear that. Todd, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I'm excited to talk to you. Thanks, Kevin. I am too. I'm, I'm excited. Let's, 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 let's talk about your, your beginning, your, some, what I sometimes like to call your superhero origin story. How did you get your start as a coach? And that could be like, for a lot of coaches, there's this process of discovery where they kind of realized or were told by some trusted mentors or confidants that, you know, maybe you should, you kind of, you kind of do this already. Maybe you should do this for a living. And then how did you go from there to starting your own coaching business? Yeah. So I, I'm a lot of exactly what you just described. So <laughs> retired from the Navy where I you know, did a lot of mentoring and coaching and really just felt like that was a part of my role as a leader. Went into that, that first job after the Navy, after uniform, was an HR man and really blessed to have this good friend and who's was the director of learning and development sit next to me. And as our friendship grew and we talked about things. One day he hands me a book, Coaching for Performance by Sir John Whitmore. And he said, Todd, this is what, this is what you should do. Like you're having $3,000 conversations all over this building <laughs> and you're coaching people. And really like, this is where I see you. And so it's kind of funny because when I was retiring from the Navy, I got asked what I wanted to do. And I said, well, I don't know how to quantify this in a job, but I feel like I'm called to help make people and organizations better. And I think we do that by making the people better. So I had no idea at the time that coaching was a vocation. I was kind of sheltered after, after 30 years in the Navy. <laughs> That's so funny. It's like, it's, it's, it really is the answer to a question. It's kind of how it comes about, isn't it? You're just like, you're looking for, you have these, these attributes, this, these desires in you to serve, to give back, to help people become better versions of themselves, more of what they want to become. And usually it's that combined with someone you trust, someone close to you saying to you, like, you know what? I, I know you see these things in yourself. I want you to know that I see them too. Other people see them too. And you should really do this. Whatever do this looks like, you should do it. And then it just basically coaching becomes the answer to that question. What should I do next with these things that I feel and these skills I have and these ways in which I want to serve? And so I, and I love this. It. It simply like you asked yourself, what now after a full career in the Navy. And it's like, well, coaching is the answer. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about, let's, let's bring it up to present day. Obviously it's probably been a long journey. What is your coaching business like now? And I, I've been asking this question in a particular way. Who do you coach and how do you coach them? The who being like generally who yeah. you're, who's your client base, like professionally, personally, where they might be at, like C-suites or mid-management, mid wherever it happens to be. And then the how, being, is it primarily one-to-one -one coaching? Do you do a mix of like, like small to medium-sized group coaching? Do you do like keynote addresses for larger audiences? Do you have courses, things like that? Maybe all of the above. So who do you coach and how do you coach them? Yeah, so small business owners, a couple of people going through life or career transition and, and a few like up and coming leaders. I've also coached some pastors and a few people outside of there, but really I'm finding that, that that sweet spot for me is that that leader of, of a team or you know, a, a, a smaller organization that's really looking to grow and develop both personally and professionally. Mainly one-on-one. -on -one. I've done some, some speaking on coaching and two groups. I have coached a few groups. I really like the need to knee conversations that are one to one where you know you awesome. really are able to to watch that one person and see them figure out the process. Like I get so much intrinsic value from that that I hate going away from from that. That always seems to be the case. That's that's maybe the the number one reason why coaches will primarily stay focused on the one to one aspect of coaching because there's you can you can do a lot of things to replicate some of that experience on both sides of the of the need to need conversation in, in in increasingly larger groups. But there's just 
there's really nothing like that one to one where you're looking, you're watching the idea, the notion dawn on their face. Like it's almost like light hitting their face, like a, like a rising sun and just being present for that and being able to see that and share that in that one to one intimate moment. There's just, there's really nothing like it, is there? No, no, it's that's the best. And my wife, like, I'll come down from a coaching and I'll be beaming and, you know, I can't talk to her about, you know, the specifics, you know, or, or any of that. Um, but she says like, obviously you had another great conversation. Like, so she can see it in me when I get done with a conversation. I love it. It's the, the, the light, the light always leaves, leaves a trace. It always leaves evidence more than a trace. In many cases, it's this, there's this magnifying effect. And I, I find myself coming back to this analogy over and over and over again, as I talk to coaches and experience different kinds of coaches and different kinds of coaching that a rising tide raises all boats. Absolutely. And I just, I, I love that about the coaching industry and individual coaches, basically the entire category of like all coaching that I've been able to talk, been able to talk to through this podcast and elsewhere. There's just this, this unified sense of we are together making each other better. And it's just, it's so powerful. And yeah, that, 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 that beaming smile. In fact, just like the, these conversations I have just in this podcast, I'll find myself with my, my cheeks will be rosy and like a little bit sore because I've just, I find myself just smiling for having been able to sh just share about these, not even the specific stories, just, there's just, there's a light that just comes right through and you definitely have it. I'm, I'm beginning to gush now a little bit because I, I tend to get, I, I get, I get a, my own rising tide of positive emotions whenever I talk about it. because It's just so inspiring to be even a small part of it. And I just love that more and more people are seeing and embracing the value of coaching and exactly what it can do for them and for those in their lives that they're trying to serve. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, I keep, I, I keep, I keep making statements instead of asking questions. <laughs> Let's talk about what might be coming up in the not too distant future. And obviously we're already kind of deep into 2022, which I'm still grappling with how fast this year has been flying by, but what's coming up for you and your coaching business in the next like six months, 12 months, maybe right around the corner that you're excited about? Yeah. So one of the things that um, I've gotten, I've gotten more comfortable with is, is getting out there and saying, I'm a coach and this is what I want to help you do. And I want to partner with yeah. you to help you achieve. That was, a, that's been a struggle for me. And it's not that I don't value what I do, but I think because of those 30 years in uniform and it was just part of who I was and I was just doing it, that saying, you know, I do this, you know, as a vocation, I do this for a fee, just didn't feel great to me. And, and I wrestled with that and I've gotten coached on that. And, and so I've got some really good opportunities to get out in front of some large groups to talk about some of my favorite things like leadership. And, and I believe that those opportunities are going to help, you know, grow the opportunity for me to partner one-on-one -on -one with people or, you know, potentially some small group in an organization and really help organizations and people get better. Man, it's, it's so, it's so tricky self-promotion, isn't it? Cause it's like, yeah. I've, I've, I find that to be a pretty common attribute of a lot of coaches because there's there's such a focus on service and finding ways to serve and to help. And sometimes, at least at first blush, there's a difficulty finding compatibility between that desire to serve and to also self-promote in a way that serves that service, so to speak. It's, it's tricky because a lot of times, like you think like, I can kind of tell you're not someone who likes to brag on yourself necessarily. You value yourself and what you can bring to the table, but you're not necessarily looking out, go out there on the street corner and sing your own praises. It's, it almost, it, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel quite right. It doesn't feel like it's in your character, right? At least at first. No. And, you know, it's interesting that we, we talked about that serve. So the very first podcast I was ever interviewed for a guy who has a networking organization and he called his uh, Tales from the C-Suite. After our discussion, he titled it Built to Serve. And the more I've thought about that title, the more I took that as such a huge compliment that he saw that I'm looking to serve others in what I do. And, and that's really, but to do that, I have to be able to tell people what I do and to have the conversation with them about what I do. I love that. I, I love, I love that term build or built. Cause it's not just, it's not just the intention to serve. It is no, I am, I am intending to serve. 
I'm going to draw my blueprints. I'm going to create my plan. I'm going to build this. I'm not going to do it alone because no one builds something like that alone. You do it with people that help you, you help them. And I just, I love, yeah, it's actually, it's such a, I mean, three simple words built to serve describes, describes everything, doesn't it? Describes everything that we're trying to do. <laughs> That's beautiful. Man, I can explore just that topic probably for another hour. <laughs> it's so rich. Oh, okay. Before, before I go, cause we're already getting pretty close to time. Where do you, and I like to ask this question in a, a certain kind of way, where do you like to be found online? And also where do you like to connect and engage online? Like, do you have a particular social media where you like to have conversations? Obviously you have a website, of course, where people could find out more about you, but yeah. How do you like to be found and where do you like to connect? Yeah, I have found LinkedIn has become my really favorite place to connect. It's just, you know, because I have my personal profile and my company profile there, people always mindset. And then but, you know, I, I built a Facebook page, people always mindset. I built an Instagram page, people always mindset. They're both a little bit newer, so still kind of catching up. But, you know, and, and I've really been fortunate that people have reached out through my website because there's a way to connect to me there. And so I like all of those. What I, one of the things that I like about people seeing my website is it, I think it gives them a better snapshot of who I am. There's the professional Todd, the everyday Todd, there's, you know, pieces on there. And I think that's important to understand who a person really is before you engage with a conversation because coaching's intimate and, you know, we're going to, we're going to talk about things that give us pause and, you know, you, you should know some things about me before we have those conversations. That's actually uh, what has helped me and a number of the people I know that are other coaches I know unlock the whole self-promotion puzzle is that it's not really self-promotion. It's letting someone see you before they've met you, getting, letting someone get to know you a little bit before they've even been in the same room with you. Because that first step on the trust journey is so important for really any endeavor that you're doing that involves connecting with people, but especially with coaching and being available like that in a way that people can understand and consume. That's, that was really the key for a lot of coaches I've talked to, to unlocking that self-promotion aspect of things, being like, no, this is just me making myself available, setting the tone and the stage for the intimacy and the vulnerability that will be required for our Absolutely. coaching relationship. And it's just like, I feel like it puts people both at their ease and also excites them to get to know more about you. And that's, that, that's ideally what you're doing with your website, with your social media. And I find that also, I agree with you. LinkedIn has really become my favorite social media platform because you can connect with people, you can engage in ways that are surprisingly meaningful, just even if you're just direct messaging or even if you're just you know reading some, people post some excellently, like intimate and like just very insightful articles about themselves, about their lives or about their experiences on LinkedIn. And I'm like, is this my favorite social media platform now? I never would have thought like five years ago, I never would have thought LinkedIn would be my favorite. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I completely agree with you. And I think, and I love the, the part that you talked about, you talked about the DMing because I posted something recently and it didn't get a lot of, you know, comments on it or anything like that. And I was kind of bummed a little bit, but I received several DMs about it. And which told me that it was something that really connected with that person way more than them just leaving, mm -hmm. you know, hey, thanks for sharing or, you know, I, you know, and it was all my old command philosophy when I was a commanding officer in the Navy and just how it relates to, you know, taking care of people. And the fact that I was able to engage with people who knew me or, and didn't know me personally, really, that was, that was showed me the power of a really good social media tool. That's the name of the game. Deepening the relationship you already have and meeting people you otherwise wouldn't have met. Yeah. That's, 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 the, that's the power. That's the magic. I, man, I could, I could have this conversation for a lot longer. Is there anything else you want to share with the audience before we go? <laughs> Not really. I think, yes. Let me change that. Yes. <laughs> I think coaching, while it's becoming a little bit more mainstream and understood, I think it's worthwhile for people who are listening that may not have taken that step to find a coach to really explore having a couple of discussions with a coach, me or another coach, it doesn't matter, but there's so many things that good coaching can unlock and help you make strides that you've been just reaching towards and not able to get to. Quite frankly, yes. And I, I love the, 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 the profile of coaching in general, how it's been rising. 
and how more like I'll encounter more and more people who have either already been coached and had such a positive experience where like they'll cite their coaching experience for like a career change or a big promotion that they got or like a major life change a transition from you know a retirement can be a struggle for a lot of people when, whenever it's happening and just citing their coach like what you think about is like oh my wife and my family were so integral to this transition and also I had a really great coach and that's I'm hearing that come up in casual conversation so much more often and I and I yeah I, I want to echo what you just said I want to encourage everyone whether you've already had a, a good experience or not, whether you haven't had any experience with coaching, just has, have some conversations. There, you know, you don't have to necessarily put a, you know, a whole lot of money on the table, at least at first. Just have some conversations, get, a, get an understanding, a little bit of a taste for the kinds of servants that are out there waiting to help you because they are, they're out there, they're everywhere, they're skilled, they're capable, and they want to help. And it's just, and if, and like you, like you were saying, and I love that you pointed this out, if it's not you, you probably know a coach who might be more perfectly suited to someone who reaches Absolutely. out to you. And it's, yeah, that rising tide. <laughs> now, there's been so many people I've said, I don't think I'm the right coach for you, but I know who I think is. Mm. There's no, you know, nothing wrong with that. Nope. And there's a lot of things right with it. I love it so much. Todd, thank you for being here today and having this conversation. Like I said, I could, we, we could have done this for a while, but I'm really grateful for your time. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and to, you know, to, spend some time with you today. This has been great. I hope you, the audience, have also enjoyed this. Reach out, find Todd, find him on LinkedIn, find him on his website, find out more about him, have a conversation. It'll be delightful, trust me. <laughs> and we will talk to you very soon.